I need to stop playing Pokemon and actually make something from Pokemon. And if you've been here before, you might think, oh, it's Nicole, she's gonna make a map. Not this time. I wanna try to do something completely different. I wanna make the Pokedex. It's the first ever Pokedex. It's a book. So why not try some book binding? I use paper sheets from this Canson mixed media sketchbook. Each page from the sketchbook created two long sheets that when folded, created four pages measuring six by eight and a half. This book contains three sections of five full page spreads, meaning there was a lot of file creation that needed to happen. Terry and I spent the better part of two weeks creating all the Pokedex entries. All the data was pulled from our personal game playthroughs, and the font was a handwriting from our friend's son. I used post-it notes to outline what I wanted each page to contain, so when I came to printing, I could just tell Terry which page sections needed to be printed. It was a really long process to make sure everything was printed properly and in the right order, but it was necessary to have a proper book. My workspace is a disaster, and we should probably clean this before we start sewing everything together. Once all the pages were printed, I needed to mark where the stitching was going to go. I marked the spot on one of them, and then in the book press, I made all the other markings in line and used a saw to cut through all the pages. Since my pages were thick, I also used a pokey stick to ensure that the holes went all the way through. Using a technique from Nerdforge's bookbinding videos, I made a stitching jig out of a chair and started sewing. I want to point out that this is in no way a tutorial. If you want a really good tutorial on how to do bookbinding, I'm going to go ahead and leave a link to their series on bookbinding in the description below. The process of bookbinding legitimately drove my cat insane and this is the most present she has ever been in a project because of how many strings were involved. If you're gonna do this, I recommend locking your cat out of the room. Once it was bound, I worked on adding the pages that will get glued into the book itself. These were just black cardstock that I cut in the same way that I did the large sheets and glued in place with a glue stick. Using a filament spool box as a weight, I let the glue dry for a while. The last thing I did to this text block was add some cloth to the spine, but the texture made it hard to apply glue to. I'm not super thrilled at my crafting ability on this section specifically. Clamps like this probably weren't the best choice, but you live and you learn. So if you're familiar with the game at all, you'll know that the Pokedex is legitimately just a book. And one of the first things I thought was really important was to match the actual fabric that's on the book, or what is better known as book cloth. So I went to Spoonflower and made custom fabric for it. But I'm not thrilled with how the color turned out. I think you can kind of see on the video that there's some pattern on here, but it's way more distinct on the actual game. So I'm gonna get this ready to become book cloth, but if I don't like how it turns out, I might go a different route with how I make this fabric. I'm going to leave a link in the description to the video I watched when learning to make book cloth, as it was incredibly informative. In the end, the book cloth did turn out fine. There were some mistakes I made in the gluing process that I learned a lot from, but the biggest issue I had was really the color. It surprisingly shows up way better on camera than it does in person. This is not any fault of Spoonflower. I designed the file and I selected the colors. They were just not bold enough for this specific fabric. I could not get over how hard it was to see the pattern. I went through the entire process of making the book cloth for learning purposes because the spine needed a black book cloth anyways. I needed to at least learn how to do this. So this was a good learning experience.
Instead of waiting for another custom fabric to ship, I decided to go a paper route. I got four copies of the pattern printed at my local Office Max. It cost me way less than custom fabric, but it comes with its own challenges. I ended up needing to use all of the sheets I ordered because I messed up the first glue up. I don't normally work with PVA glues this much. If you aren't even and consistent, you will get weird bubbling and warping. If you don't have enough even pressure, the glue job can also just look bad. This first try, I didn't put the covers of the book in the book press. The second attempt, I did, and it made a world of difference. They came out nice and even. Oh, there we That's go. That's nice. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Once the covers were out of the book press, it was time to fold the edges and assemble the cover. I cut the corners at a 45 degree angle and gently rolled the edges over. Since this is paper, I wanted to try to limit the amount of ink degradation around the corners as much as possible. There is no way to avoid the white paper showing through the blue ink once folded though, so being slow and patient does help. A little glue and some masking tape and they were back in the book press. I took my spine piece and cut out the material I needed. After applying a good amount of glue, I put the front cover and back cover on the fabric and let the whole thing dry under some weight. Finally, it was time to attach the text block to the cover. Again, with a good amount of glue, I smeared it on everything and then put it all in place. This is where I realized that my black paper pieces weren't long enough to cover the entire inside cover, so I just added some additional black pieces of paper to help hide my crimes. Last but not least is all the fun book details. The Glowforger is used to make not only the MDF core for the cover, but also this front nameplate. Using the masking tape straight out of the laser, I painted the engraves and then glued everything in place. To add the bow, we drilled two rather large holes in the cover. We also needed to do a bit of surgery to the inside front cover because the paper wasn't liking where we told it to bend. It wanted to do its own thing which was not going where I wanted it to go, and buckling. So we told it who's boss with a can of barge contact cement. The bow was made out of that same cord that we used on the spine. I did have to look up a YouTube video to learn how to make the proper bow for this cover, because we're always learning over here. To keep the ends from fraying over time, I used some string and super glue to make some end bits. More super glue was used to attach the brass corner guards. Now to show you guys my favorite part, all of the drawings. Our friend's son not only gave us his handwriting for the font, but he also made us a ton of amazing Pokemon drawings. I personally asked for like 10, but he gave us easily 30 and they're all amazing. To put these in place, I used some scrapbooking corners to not damage the original art. We really wanted to capture the spirit of a kid going out into the wild and searching for Pokemon. I think he really delivered with these drawings and we are truly forever grateful. To finish it up, I painted the edges with a little bit of blue paint to hide the white seams and made a walnut stand.
and then it was done. We want to give a huge shout out to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you guys we're able to make cool things like this book, so we appreciate all your support. If you want to make a Pokedex like this, we have all the files available on our Patreon. Link is in the description below. Thank you so much, see you all next time.